welcome to another episode of Meta Games. Today, we have an insightful sharing by an NFT artist, and afterwards, we will play a game of drawing charades with an interesting twist. NFT artist? Who's that? Big wonder who I only know Beepo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> don't know who. We shall see. <laughs> Hey, he's here. Hey, hello. Hey, hey, hey. Hello. Hi. hello. Hi. hello. Hi, my name is Jonathan, also known as Zero Cool on the internet, and I'm an NFT artist, but I've been doing new media art for the longest time. Do you know how long have you been an artist? Been an artist as long as I have started uh, vandalizing my secondary school textbook. So I think those were my early formative years in uh, art, but eventually I progressed to using the dig- digital medium. What kind of art do you usually do? My art is uh, 100% always new media or digital art. So, uh, of course, in the recent times, everyone has heard about NFTs, but I've been doing digital art, you know, since uh, 2008. What are some themes you explore in your art? So, I like to do what I call the reworking of classic old masters, but done in a digital style. So, for example, uh, you can cut to this picture. Uh, I have this uh, latest piece called The Garden of Internet Delights. And this piece uh, basically shows a retelling of uh, Bosch, which is an old master. He's painting of earth, heaven and hell, and then the three stages uh, of, of the different dimensions in the world. But for mine, I chose to do earth, as in the internet world, and then hell as in a uh, critic on privacy on the internet, and then heaven in terms of the content heaven we are dealing with now. But you can see it in the picture here. So you mentioned that you, know, you have started uh, making NFTs. So when did you venture into the NFT space? Uh, I actually only started doing NFTs uh, early this year, but I've known about it since uh, about two to three years ago. But I've never had the chance to actually launch a project that I feel proud of because I feel in the NFT space, of course, there are a lot of uh, scams and a lot of what we call rug pulls, right? But for me, I'm a long-term artist. Uh, art is my livelihood and my, my career. So I have always um, wanted to work with uh, reputable galleries and in Singapore, I managed to work with this uh, private art collection called The Culture Story during Singapore Art Week. And I chose to launch my NFT collection there uh, among um, reputable art collectors, definitely not speculators of any sort. Welcome to today's uh, topic, very exciting, right? Digital art. My name is Jonathan and uh, also known as Zero Code on the internet. And today we are at what we call an informal uh, NFT masterclass, right? But of course, on, on the internet, no one's truly a master because crypto moves so fast, right? So I, I dare not even call myself a master, but I'm passionate about art. And today I'm going to share with you what led me to this journey of creating an NFT collection. So basically, this was a project I did for Kobe Bryant. I've been in a digital uh, art space a lot. So last time, they called this a new media projection. Uh, next. And then I've done some work for other brands like New Balance. I'm a total sneakerhead. So the thing about my art is that it has always been digital on the screen. Uh, next. So I started, you know, exhibiting art about eight years ago in, in China. So because, uh, of course, you know, to be an artist in Singapore, red tough, struggling, starving artist, right? So I said that, screw it. There's a, what Tony Robbins say, right? Self-limiting belief. So I always believe that you can always make money even though you, you're doing some weird shit, right? So for, for me, I, I like to make, this was my, some of my early digital art. This is called what I call the fake comic book covers. So they're actually like comic books, right? But they don't exist. So I created these fake characters like Dolphin's Revenge, right? Then I, I used to be a, a journalist in my earlier uh, career, a freelance writer. So I was, uh, that's a long story. So I have like, lines like, his parents were made into tuna, now he's after their woman. So all the weird things that totally don't make sense, right? So the art collectors, they'll look, they'll laugh, and then they'll buy. So, so, so I know that, you know, sometimes when you sell art, you need to have humor. So if you're not famous, you try to at least be funny or at least attempt to be. Uh. So the next one. And then I created another series called... Uh, fake movie posters so these are basically movie posters that don't exist and the gallery i was working with they are pure genius because they, they sell like paintings they are like hundred thousand dollars you know chinese contemporary like serious stuff right so how 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 they 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 sold my work is they hung my work uh, behind the table where like the art dealer would you know sell the close the hundred thousand dollar painting right so when you close we're selling people t- Paintings to people that can afford hundred dollar pay hundred thousand dollar paintings, anything that's like eight hundred to five hundred USD is like charm change, right? So I, I saw quite a lot of these uh, prints. So next one. 
Then after that, I got some like, you know, interesting new media projects. I did this uh, uh, projection for a Russian band called Mami Tro. They are basically like the U2 of Russia. La. And then, and the strange thing is on the internet, right? You don't know who you're talking with. Actually, like, um, got, got introduced and then they were like, I thought like, you know, is this a scam? You know, Russian mafia and all things like that. But no, actually, it's real. I met the guy. He came down to Singapore and he came down to Singapore. Guess what he wanted to eat? Chicken, chicken rice. rice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, so like he was way ahead of the curve right there, right? So the next one. So now to present day. We zoom back to present day, right? So present day, I did this digital painting called the Tower of Stonks. Why? <laughs> because this. So this painting, if you, I'll, I'll send, I'll send the producers another old masters painting called by Peter Bruegel the Elder. It's called uh, the Tower of Babel. So the Tower of Babel is this tale of like humanity trying to reach the heavens, right? So it's kind of like the story of crypto, right? The story of crypto, everyone's trying to reach the heaven, everyone's trying to go to the moon. So I thought like, you know, what better way to play on the whole like hype and craze over NFTs by making a, a piece of art that really symbolizes the early days go rush mentality of this space. So so when I, I, I presented this work during Singapore Art Week, a lot of the collectors had a good laugh, right? Because obviously if you're an art collector, you're financially literate, right? You wouldn't go all in on Lunar Coy or something like that, right? So this 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 uh digital painting was called the Tower of Stongs and basically I had a great time um creating it and was featured in uh, business times as well. So the next one so this was one of my older digital paintings that I remixed a bit for uh, Singapore Art Week this year. So it's called the Garden of Internet Delights. And basically this is uh, based off an old painting by a famous painter called Bosch. And basically what he did was he had a painting called, you know, the Garden of Earthly Delights. Then you have the heaven, earth and the hell. And for, for me, the earth panel is like kind of like, you know, social media, you know, everyone liking their pictures of their own ass and things like that. Right, and then gaming, technology, and things like that. And then on the heaven side, we are in, what, why I put a remote control? Because we are kind of like in the era whereby you can just press and get anything from grab food to like watching Netflix, right? So we are in the content heaven, kind of like instant gratification of the internet world, right? And on the on the right panel, the hell panel, I have like a, you know, security camera on top of a mock Superman costume and things like that because that's what we call uh, the privacy, right? The privacy issues on the internet and basically I tied all these teams together and I, I realized in art, you need to go past selling pictures of monkeys. Of course, I, I wish I sold pictures of monkeys that was millions, right? But gotta be realistic. We're in like Asia, you know, the collectors, they're used to collecting things with deep cultural symbolic meaning and I chose to, you know, play on these terms that are very accessible in our daily life. Uh, next one. So this picture is called, um, you know, the meme machine. It's of course a play on the painting by, man. you know, da Leonardo da Vinci, which uh, the Vitruvian man, right? So why, why is he in a space suit? Because he's going to the moon, right? And that's why everyone <laughs> hopes their crypto and their NFTs go, right? So all together, this is a quick, you know, collection of some of the, some of the works that I've done over the years, uh, a sampling. I hope you all enjoy it. And now you can ask me any question. I like the fact that he's anatomically correct. You can see it's the rocket for the balls there, right? right, right. I thought that is that Jet is fuel, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I thought that is what like, art is uh, all about, right? Yeah. Even people look at the same picture can have a different perspective. Yes, yes, yes. But he happened to look at the balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Right on the Bali, right? That's where his yeah, interest yeah. is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have like a routine or a target every month you might produce how many? Pieces of yeah, art. so so for me, I plan to do one major art project a year. For example, like the Singapore Art Week exhibition, and then in between, I do what we call like um one of one private commissions. So usually, like some art collector, like like you know doctor, lawyer, or or, or like some guy that some tech startup person that cash out, they were like, oh Jordan, I went to your exhibition. I saw your stuff, everything's like the main pieces are so out. Of course, that's the I make scarcity, right? So so they were like they were, they were, you inquire what what else can I get? Then I say, oh, you can buy my one of one NFT. Then they say, you know, one NFT one of one really? Yeah, I say yeah because this NFT should be unique to you and and it's my kind of like my dialogue with you as the collector. So they'll discuss with me what teams they like and I generally do like maybe like five one of one pieces NFTs a year. And then in between that, I also sell uh I still sell art prints in China, as well as I'm working on my comic book as well. Because a, a lot a lot um. That's sort of, I won't say it's a very strict routine, but it's 
kind of the typical base level output I aim to do every year. So what are the challenges? Do you feel like sometimes I don't feel like doing art today, but I have, to, <laughs> I have, a, I have a deadline to me. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Is that like one of the challenges? I, I think the, the challenges are we, we need uh, food and shelter. So like, like when I see like inflation going, I think I, think I need to you know, continue working. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Across town. Now, the, <laughs> now the stock market in the toilet and things like that, right? So, so I, but, I, but on, on, a, on a serious note, I feel that like, I've always wanted to do art, right? So I've, for the longest time, I've been cracking, like, how do I make this financially sustainable? How do I, you know, earn a, at least a, you know, a comfortable amount a year such that you're not the typical, stereotypical Singaporean starving artist, right? Because if you look at the overseas artists, the content creators, these people are making millions, right? So mm. so in Singapore, the creative people, I think they, they are stuck in this, like, well where they, they can't really see the potential. But when you go on the internet, the stories of potential are so great. So that's why I decided to do this. What advice would you have for someone who is very young and thinking of venturing into art? Um, I, I would say that first, uh, don't, don't, don't do art immediately, right? Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, because uh, my own story is that like last time I used to, to work in the creative space. So I was a copywriter. I've also uh, worked as like a creative head in, in like a, a, those kind of like tech startups or like an ad agency, that kind of thing. So I, 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 I build up lots of savings before I decided to do art and pursue art. And over the years, I sort of like, you know, A-B tested what would sell. Because generally, the, the the first five years of your creative life will be pretty crappy. Because you're trying to find your voice. You're trying to like, why is no one buying my work? You know, depression. Go at home, stare at the ceiling, right? Is my work worthless? Nobody cares, right? So you go, you go through like all these kind of... Um, periods of doubt before you finally uh, 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 hit a particular style that like captures the audience and, and I only did that maybe in the fourth or fifth year and even then it was not enough to obviously you know take the plunge and do it full time so it's, it's, it's been a, a decade long process to find my footing in this space as an artist so that's that's my experience and I hope maybe it's useful for any young artists listening to this His right daughter. now you take time it, uh, I think the, the word I have to say is uh, patience yeah patience so even with NFT it has not changed the economics of artists um, the, the art world is incredibly brutal and, and as most of you know having art skills alone is not enough like if you look at the NFT space yeah. alone there's all these kind of like you know, offline hustling that, you know, marketing. a lot of deal making, a lot of marketing, a lot of Discord and to hire like two Discord managers, US time and Asia time is already 8K USD or they, they, they quoted me for Ethereum a month, which is not cheap. Uh. Hmm. These, are, these are pros. Uh. These are people that really drive the, the community, the traffic and everyone talks about community in the NFT space, but really the real world they should be talking about is marketing. Right, because you can be the best artist, but if like zero marketing traction, that'll be really bad. So I, I, I decided to use something um a bit unconventional in the NFT space, because NFT space usually they use Discord and all this like Twitter marketing and all that, right? But I did, I'm just one guy, you know. If I do all this, then where's the time to make quality artwork? So I believe in still, you know, putting 80% of my time to the, to to create the artwork. And then the other twenty percent of the time I so, so called like outsource the task of sales and marketing to people that are more experienced than me doing sales and marketing like art dealers galleries and basically I, I, I've mixed a hybrid of like the traditional and the digital space and I feel uh, this gives me a very long and sustainable runway that's not driven by marketing hype but people buy my art purely because they really like it and these are the kind of collectors that any artist would prefer rather than speculators that buy and you hope like tomorrow the price go to the moon right then when the price go, goes to hell everyone like oh you're a fraud you know you're a crap right <laughs> things like that right? that's what you don't want as artists yeah. yeah yeah actually it's really great that you are sharing from the perspective of an artist like. I think mm. nowadays a lot of NFT artists don't know whether you agree uh, are just in it for the money <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but then the interesting thing is this right then, so if let's say today someone buys your art right yes NFT is kind of like a JPEG, what, right? Digital, digi digital file, right? Yeah. So, how, you know, because we're gonna charge them like from hundreds of thousands of dollars, yes. right? How do they ensure that you know people don't just copy their artwork or you know they can just replicate? Why, why, why would they pay so much for that? Okay. Artist? So, so why, why would they pay so much for the NFT? You're, you're saying the the concept. Your question, if I'm hearing it correctly, yeah. is like. 
it's just a JPEG, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like why would they it's, pay? Yeah, pay people so can much, copy right? paste so, or just. So okay, so so there are many answers to this <laughs> <laughs> question, and yeah. and we could be here for weeks. I'm not joking, uh, right? But my in, in in my short answer is like, as an artist, you must find what's your value proposition of your NFT. So a lot of mm. a lot of NFT drops, they talk about like, oh, we got a roadmap, we're going to do this. Then they, they talk about, yeah, oh, after yeah, you buy our yeah. NFT, then we are going to do a like DeFi game. But oh, frankly, these are all dreams in the cloud <laughs> because mm. they like, most of them, them don't pan out. I don't know how expensive it is to build a DeFi game. Yeah. What kind of startup capital you need? So so I rather go, I I, I, I reduce it to the to the micro, I, to, to, to something that I can really, you know, deliver, which is, it's just me making my art, so I make the art the best I can make. But mm. I I give something that um, traditional art collectors they really like. So in the traditional art world, the non digital art world, right? People buy art and they usually have problem to store the art. Like they need big warehouse and things like that. And then my art prints are quite big, like the size of like three meters and things like that. So people that buy my NFT, right? I give them this option of reprinting it if their house burn catches fire. <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's a that's a short answer. But okay. another way of looking at it is if imagine you're a, a, a wealthy art collector, you really like art. And then for example you buy like my artwork, right? And then you you want to ship it overseas. You want to move to your house to Los Angeles or Shanghai, right? And then usually in the traditional artwork, the cost of like creating and insuring the work to ship it overseas might be as expensive as, as the work mm. itself for, for I mean for new artists, right? So I, I said that okay, let's kind of like re look at the benefit of digital art. What's the real benefit of digital art? Digital art it lives on the internet or it lives mm. in for for me it lives in my Dropbox in high resolution files, mm. right? So as long as you're a collector of my work, you can prove the wallet. You have my NFT. If you say that hey Jonathan, I'm going to move house to or my house burned down in the the fire or something yeah, like that, yeah, right? Yeah. My, PM, my, my PMD yeah. catch fire and my like bungalow, my good class bungalow burned down, right? <laughs> <laughs> Things like that, right? Something like that. Then so I'll say, yeah, sure, show me your 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 wallet. Oh, you're the NFT holder. Cool. Our our work with my art print, fine art printer to print the high resolution, uh, museum quality piece for you to enjoy. So this is kind of like, uh, how I've used the NFT thing to my advantage. It's kind of like what I call the. The art creator likes to call it the digital world, wow, it seems, right? but actually it's just <laughs> the blend of physical and digital, right? Oh. Yeah. So just now you actually mentioned that uh, you A-B tested your artworks, right? So what are the things that you find out about, like what work and what not? So I realized that um, uh, a work needs to have be grounded in like a bit of uh, cultural relevance. So you see a lot of my work is usually like like the earlier the fake movie poster. That's like, you know, a play on pop culture and humor. Then for my my uh, more recent works, the especially the NFT uh, um, artworks, right? They are rooted in, you know, themes like greed, you know, uh, social media and themes like themes that are easily accessible okay. for 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 the viewer and the public. And the way I make the work, those are the themes that I think everyone can relate to. But how I make my my work uh, recognizable is the color. So my my color palette is always pretty wild, as you can see, right? So it has a signature color palette that collectors have have uh, grown to like. Uh. So that's why I found out for myself. With regards to JPEG, which is easily copied, so someone can just copy the image and then uh, make it into an NFT on a separate chain or whatever, Correct. right? So then they sell it like although it's a real one. But how does an investor tell? This is a real and this is a fake. Okay. So so in the crypto space, right, it's very cruel. <laughs> so, so you realize if you read all the tweets, right, you see people getting scammed, then they cry, then everyone like laughing at them. It's like, oh, your own funeral, you're <laughs> down, right? <laughs> so sadly, right, the honest truth is, the uncensored truth is that if you if you buy a work that's expensive and then you didn't verify the source, then it's on you. Sadly, yeah, because okay. this is the internet. There's nothing like I as a creator can control what what some like you know, uh, scammer in another country is doing on the, uh, you know, taking JPEGs and then mid it again, right? Because, you know, the world the World Wide Web is just yeah. you can't beat it, right? So so how this 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 are what we call the teething early problems of this space, and I I believe that eventually we will reach a point whereby there will be some kind of regulation. We don't know what it looks like. But right now, I would say that it's still the Wild Wild West and that's why it's just the same for any financial product, right? Although although NFTs are not a financial product and this is not financial advice, right? That's what the YouTubers <laughs> say, right? It's not financial <laughs> advice, right? So it, it's the same. You need to do your own due diligence as a buyer to like, 
make sure you're not buying from the wrong artist. Yeah. So uh, of course it, it takes time. And and, and nowadays the, the scams are very rampant and they're they're very savvy, right? Yeah. Getting better and better. Yeah, so I, I would say that uh, as on a closing note, this space is very new, it's very exciting, but everyone should be super vigilant on, on what they what they click on, what they purchase and then what they buy. And for creators, as long as you're if you're a creator aspiring artists as long as you create artwork that you're proud of and, and that you build a loyal uh, collector base and following you'll be here to stay yeah so thanks guys for having me thank you yeah, thank, thank you, you for sharing thanks for right. sharing cheers guys <laughs>
looks like what Yang Zhi drew just now. <laughs> yeah. It's different. Just... He has like some unicorn horns just now. So typical. Is it that tough? Yes. <laughs> mm. Look so for those a... very distinct stuff. It's like distinct to you, it's not distinct to us. Yeah. <laughs> there are quite a few possibilities. How accurate is the drawing? It is about 80% done. Whoa. Okay, uh, let me guess this. 80% la. done, sure. Yeah. I hope I'm not wrong. I'm just let like me try. Lack of about 20% details. 20%? Uh, then looks like it's this one. Uh. This, this one? one? This one? This? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right. Wow, I'm Whoa. right. Yeah. Oh. See? Is it? Don't uh, you? Really or not? Yeah. I'm, so that people. I can consider good. being a NFT, NFT artist. artist. <laughs> because if you look at this, this one is 80%. No? So <laughs> this one? Yeah. That's oh, the one. Yeah, I, found it. I was looking at oh, the thing. Oh, because the, the, yeah, the yeah, head thing is not so obvious. I was look, yeah, looking at like what is the thing on the head. <laughs> Okay. The clue is actually eighty percent done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> easy Let's one. Guess. <laughs> Very easy. <laughs> this is not easy. Okay. No, no, okay. <laughs> well, later give him the this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Wow, this is damn tough. Can okay, I try find again. mine just now? Huh? I try. The samurai. Draw already, lah. Don't draw and forget already. This one. Okay, this start. Is yours. Yeah. <laughs> what's <laughs> that? What, what's that? There's something. A body with a goba head. Oh, wait. Oh, it's oh. very familiar. Oh, that's the rest of the detail. Said already, something. Wow, oh. you are fast. Okay, okay, I know, I know. Already. Can I guess? Oh, yes. Complicated ones are oh. easy. Okay, okay. Yes, I think it's this. This? Yeah. Ah, oh, wrong, wrong. No. Hmm. Wrong. Oh, yo. <laughs> How can that How can be wrong? Be? Oh. Can I try found again? It, I found it really. This I found one. it really. Correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I found it. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I guess this. Yeah. I got one. The other one. Just one. Oh, so there's two Similar. of those. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Not write, write any words. words. Oh, got it. Okay, okay. okay not write it. any words. Thank you. Must be those with words. But there are those. There are quite a number of <laughs> words. Yeah, there's actually a lot of words. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Oh. Guess. Wow, uh, fast. Just guess lah. <laughs> Yes, correct. Huh? Wow, that's fast. <laughs> what? Huh? I think the same way as Yoda. Yeah. It's so obvious. It's, it's like so Yoda. obvious. <laughs> I don't even know where's the picture. Where is it? Okay. Which one is the picture? Yoda, Yoda. Yoda, where is it? <laughs> oh, this. Oh. Yeah, huh? Don't look like it. Spot. <laughs> don't look like it. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's supposed work. to be a round head. Okay, so since we have, uh, you know, everyone has the same number of points. So I will go in and draw and then the person who can guess the fastest will be the winner for today. So there will be three losers and all three of you will do the forfeit together. <laughs> and um, this picture is repeated in the collage that you have. So actually it's easier to guess. Uh, so this one is really fastest person wins. Why should get the copy? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like everywhere. Eh? Okay, I guess. What? Oh, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Why can't repeat? This one only got one. What? I know, I know. This one. Correct. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I saw it, but too late. Ah, I it's saw it. Cool. I saw it, but too late. Oh, yeah, it's repeated. Repeat twice. Yeah, 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 it's repeated. Only repeat twice. Repeated once. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So Elvis well, is the fast. fastest person. He's the winner, so he won't be taking part in the four feet. I would love to join. <laughs> you can join us too. Wow. Elvis will be Why very good at the coffee? spot the difference kind of game. <laughs> oh my 
We didn't do the we didn't do the, I the stupid thing. Oh, <laughs> you do this? Do you do this? Do this? <laughs> okay, so with that we come to the end of our meta games. I hope you all enjoyed yourself and I hope all of you all learned a lot more about and the metaverse. Alright? So with that, thank you all and till next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.